sharing your insights is something you're going to want to do, whether you are a brand or an agency. So in today's session, we're going to deep dive into the best ways to do this within motion and a couple of different options you have depending on the type of reporting that you're doing. So one important thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to reporting insights is we want to make sure we are reporting on things that we can drive action with. We don't want to report just for the sake of reporting and just sharing different fun creatives with no action we can take on it. So just something to keep in mind is that we want to make sure we can drive different kinds of action. And when it comes to those different types of actions, how we can actually think of this as like a little mini flywheel. We usually have a hypothesis. So we think X kind of ad is going to work really well. We then launch the ad. We take action to launch it, to create it, to run it. And then we review those results. Did we actually get what we were expecting? Then we go back to build a hypothesis, take action, review results, have a hypothesis, etc. So it's that little mini flywheel that makes it very, very actionable. So when it comes to steps that we can take to get there, number one thing you're going to want to do is align on cadence and expectations. Do we need to report out to the team weekly? Is it bi-weekly? Are we doing a monthly deep dive recap? Are we doing a quarterly report? So figure out the expectations and cadence that makes the most sense to you on your team. So the second thing you're going to want to do is build out those reports in motion. Having them pre-built and ready to go based on those cadences is going to make it really easy to just quickly come in, grab the insights you need, and make that reporting process really simple. Third thing you're going to want to do, of course, is block off time. If you know we are doing a weekly report where we are sharing some top performers and some different action steps we want to take from there, Block off a Friday afternoon where you can just quickly come in, pull up those motion reports, and you know you have that cadence set. And number four is just keeping momentum on actions being taken. So making sure to follow this process is, again, just going to make reporting really easy on the team. When it comes to different types of reporting, there's a few different kind of buckets you could group them into. You've got your ad hoc reports, which is just somebody's asking you, what is our top performer last 14 days? Can you send me how this one ad is doing, et cetera, et cetera. That would be more of that ad hoc style. This is where we would use snapshots, which I'll show you within motion to quickly grab that insight, save a little bit of information from there that you can quickly send off to anybody on the team or off the team. Next, we have weekly updates. That's more so diving into new slash recent launches, how they're performing, keeping a close eye on some of those top performers and spenders, maybe finding some quick iteration opportunities, and then highlighting any possible emerging trends to keep an eye on. And again, we can use snapshots for this as well too, or we have a really fun process for grabbing insights that you can really easily put on like a slide deck, for example. So the last bucket here is our monthly slash quarterly report. It's probably going to be a little bit of a larger report, but what we're probably going to focus in on here is any specific focus areas we had within the previous month or quarter. Do we notice any trends within those, any highlights or emerging ideas that came from that past month or quarter, as well as what do we want to take moving forward into the next month or next quarter, what direction we want to take. Now, when it comes to reporting out, we actually do have a template. Feel free to take this and use this on your own if you need. But just to give you an idea of how some of these slides might look, we might have something like our top performer overview. So pulling in, let's just say we're doing that weekly report. Maybe we're pulling in this view here of here are our four top performers. Here are some key themes we noticed. And here are the next steps we want to take from here. So for example, we noticed X creative worked really well. Let's next week get some more creatives by X creator because we noticed this specific theme. We could also possibly dive into landing pages and what landing pages are working well for us. Do we need to start directing people to different places because we're seeing a bit better performance with our landing page? Which copy is working well? And maybe you want to do even a deeper dive analysis on specific ads where we might have a slide like this that has our hypothesis, our next step, and any additional notes. So maybe, for example, we're saying this creative reached this specific audience, which was interesting because we expected it to reach X other audience. And we're noticing drop off within this period of time in this video. Let's go ahead and swap some different things out. So just a little bit of a deeper dive on here's what we're seeing. We dove into the creative insights. Here's our hypothesis. And here's the next step we want to take from there. Maybe even like a slide for iteration opportunities where we're saying, here's the iteration, here's the ad we want to iterate on, here's our inspiration of what's really working well. Maybe it's ad one is not capturing attention very well, 
ad two is capturing attention and ad two, we're leaning into like a really shocking hook. So let's go ahead and swap ad one to have a hook that's more similar to ad two. So leaning into iteration opportunities. And then we've got the reports, which are more of those higher level trends using our comparative reports. So maybe how are the different stages of funnel performing? How are our different ad type formats performing? How are our different products performing? Which creator is working better for us? Etc. So these are just some examples of a template you can use. And to find these, you can go to help.motionapp.com, click on get started with motion. At the very bottom, you'll have our resources section. Go ahead and click this motion reporting slide deck template. And then you can click this option here to open up the template and then just click file to make a copy of it. So you'll have access to a base template you can use. On motion side of things, we're now gonna to wanna to go ahead and build out those folders based on those different cadences that you've set. First thing to note is you can build folders like we see here. Now our demo account's really messy. Hopefully you don't have a million folders like we do here, but go ahead and click that little plus button next to folders and we'll create that. So let's just say we've got weekly reporting to start. And that is one bucket of reporting that we wanna start building reports out for. I can click into that folder, click this little plus button next to it, and we'll go ahead and start building a top performing report. Now let's just say we wanna look at our top performers that are a part of prospecting. I can go ahead and add different filters for that. So let's do campaign name contains prospecting. And I wanna do last 14 days for me, that makes sense. So I'm gonna keep it as that, but feel free to swap this based on that reporting ca cadence. So if we are doing weekly or we are doing a quarterly or a monthly, you can set those presets there. So we've got our filter on, we've got our report title, we've got our date range. Now, maybe I wanna see which ads are meeting a certain benchmark, what truly our top performers are. I can click add filter and we have our performance metric filters, which will allow you to narrow down these views. So like I'm saying, you can just quickly hop in here, grab those top four or whatever it might be, but it's already built and ready to go. So maybe anything that's spent above a thousand for us is something I would wanna look at. I wanna hide out anything below a thousand. But then I also only wanna see ads that are hitting our ROAS goal of above three, let's just say. So I can go ahead and throw those two filters on and now my view is pre-built and ready to go, pulling in all ads that are matching that criteria. You can also adjust your metrics here as well based on what kind of things you're reporting out on. So maybe I look at ROAS, but I also look at thumb stop, so which assets are capturing attention, which ones are holding attention, which ones are driving clicks out, and then which ones are driving purchases from those clicks. So those are my metrics I look at. So I'm pre-building all of those different metrics onto here, pre-building my filters and then saving that within my view. So it's ready to go. Now to report out the way we make it really quick and easy, I'll give you an example of how this looks. Say we have our template open. I could head back over to motion and say I wanted to pull this asset in. I can right click on it and select copy card. Once you have that little check mark down here, I can come back into my slide deck and I can really easily just paste that in just like this and format it to look nice within my deck. On top of that, we also have a download as GIF option, which is really great. So this is again gonna save you time on reporting where I can click on Creative Insights, select your placement sizing first, and then you select Download as GIF. That's gonna pull that playable asset directly into the slide deck. So agencies, if you're watching this, you're gonna know this piece is so fun to have. So you're not trying to figure out a way to pull those playable previews and showcase them off to your client. But even as a brand, having this downloaded as GIF option is so nice to just sh visualize and show the rest of your team what specifically we are talking about when we're chatting about performance and what's working. So once the GIF is downloaded, I can then come back into my slide deck. I'll just go to my downloads folder and then I can drag that playable asset directly in here. You can of course resize it, reformat it, put it over top of the top area here. Hopefully if you've got feed asset, you've got that one by one or four by five, so it should fit pretty nicely on top. So you've got your metrics and then your playable asset to load in. Now that copy option works on any one of these views. So whether it was a card like we saw here, or we wanna lean into this bar chart view, I can right click and click copy chart, 
or the line chart view, same thing you can do here. So any one of those views that you want to use, we've got that copy and paste option, which makes it really quick and easy. And then lastly, when it comes to more to that ad hoc reporting slash, this can definitely be used in the weekly reports, just depending on team and what kind of insights you're sharing out. We also have another way that makes it really easy just to quickly grab a little mini screenshot of something and add those insights. So let's just say I want to go to card view and maybe I just want to select these three assets saying these are our top performers last 14 days. I can select those three. I can click share report and you can add some insights here. So here are our top performers last 14 days. Then I'll click copy link and you'll now have a shareable URL you can send to anybody, whether they are on your motion team or they are not in the motion account, they'll still be able to see this. And how that looks is like this where you'll have the insight that you typed out at the top listed here. You can always change it if you need. You got the three assets that we selected beforehand and they can click into it to preview the video or preview the static as well, which is great. And then table chart below with any extra metrics needed. Um, this can be customized as well too. So just know if you don't want to pull the whole string of metrics through, you can customize your column before you share report and it'll only show what you've customized it to. And then lastly, you've got this comment section as well, too, where you can have conversation back and forth with teammates. So if you want to say, hey, can you take these three ads and make three new versions, but leaning into the same concept, you could add that comment. I could tag a teammate in here as well, too, on like the person that I want to see the specific report. So lots of different ways to use the share report feature. And just one last thing to mention is that anytime you click to share report, it's going to live here under the top left menu under snapshots. So I can click into that. It's going to open up the entire list of snapshots I've ever made, and I can search for them as well too. So if I wanted to see any ones that mentioned top performers, I can go ahead and search for that. And it's going to look in the description or the name of the report itself. And then you'll have just those snapshots pulling in specifically. So these are some different ways you can report out. We've got that more ad hoc style reporting where you're just clicking share report, sharing your insight, and you can quickly send that link off to anybody. Or we've got that more formal slide deck reporting where we're going to also make it really easy. You can right click on a card, right click on a chart, copy it paste it into a slide deck with all of your metrics and then also make it look prettier with the download as GIF options. You've got that playable asset being able to easily speak to the creative as we're talking about what insights we're finding. Mm -hmm.